Hi Libra. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that you are doing well. This reading is for any sun, moon, or rising Libra. We'll take a look at the cards. We'll get a sense of the awareness for the week, guidance, and possible outcomes. I will also choose a few oracle cards for additional information. So let's see what we have for you, Libra. Okay, what can we learn? For? So what messages do you have? Okay, give me a second to take a look at the cards and we will go from there. So how we begin, we begin with the Ten of Wands. And in this Ten of Wands illustration, we see this guy working hard to push these wands up the hill and maybe he's bringing things to market. He's got to do it himself, but you know, this shows um, a sense of strength to be able to do this and of wanting to get things done. Well, with the Ten of Wands, this also can suggest that you are handling a lot of different responsibilities and that you're busy and you have um, obligations to take care of and that perhaps you're doing more than your fair share and you're shouldering the load. Of, of making things happen or getting things done by virtue of, of driving these wands up, you know, up the path. So what happens when we are overburdened and we feel that we are doing too much on our plate? We feel tired. We can feel exhausted. We can feel resentful that other people are not picking up the part of what they should be doing. And so this is something that you really have to think about. Is there a part of your life or your responsibilities that you could um, delegate to someone else? That you could ask very clearly, I need some help here. Who's going to help out? And it could be at home, you know, running around, running the children around to different activities, um, trying to balance grocery shopping or housework or yard work, and that you may be feeling that you are doing it all and not getting enough help. So it's important that you take the time to ask people to help you, and it could be at the office on a team project where maybe, you know, uh, sometimes the most capable people get more work because they can handle a lot of things and get it done. And so, you know, you just keep saying, yeah, I can take that on. Oh, I can take that on too. And then ultimately it becomes too much. And so that's the thing to be aware of and to think about is that ultimately um, resentment, exhaustion, fatigue, frustration comes in. So find a way to lessen your load. Find a way to sweep away some of the things on your plate. And ultimately, you will feel better. So this is a lot of hard work and feeling burdened. And then we have the Two of Cups. And this Two of Cups is a beautiful card. We see two people, they're standing equal heights. Uh, they're looking at each other and they're with, you know, eye to eye, exchanging the cups and the angel is looking down at them. So this is a sense of really finding the other person that um, really brings meaning to your life. It's a potential for a deep relationship, a deep emotional experience. It's the type of relationship where you might finish your partner's sentences, you know what they're thinking, you know what they're feeling, but it really is two holes coming together as one. It's the unification of, of people um, loving or having loving type relationships. It could be a deep friendship or a deep connection to someone who shares similar interests. But this is the opportunity that if you're in a relationship, that it has the potential to be very meaningful and to have depth 
and a true understanding of each other. If you're single, this bodes well for you that you might meet someone who has a lasting impact for you. So keep your eyes open, put yourself out there, make sure that you're able to receive um, the positive vibes and the attraction from others and uh, uh, you just never know in life really, that's, that's always the truth. You never know who's behind the door that could open the door and could change your life for the better. So with the two of cups, um, you have the opportunity to have a wonderfully deep, satisfying, fulfilling relationship. And if you're in a relationship, it's going to perhaps get better or perhaps more serious. If you're single, you have the chance to meet someone that could fulfill this, this role in your life um, of love, of, of respect, harmony. So we also now have the two of uh, coming up and the two of swords. And when you see this two of swords, you see the woman crossing herself with the two swords, crossing her heart. She's blindfolded. She's sitting down there. Often when we see twos, it relates to having to make a decision between two opposing or you know, oppo opposing ideas, opposing forces. So what the swords bring is objectivity. It brings reason, logic, analysis for you to be thinking of your situation and the decision to be able to, to make and to make these decisions without judgment and without, uh, you know, having a, perhaps a preconceived notion. What the other thing to think about with the Two of Swords is that she is crossing her heart. And, you know, when you're crossing your heart, you're blocking off emotions, perhaps, and feelings from coming out or things coming in. So this could mean that you are uh, purposely trying not to deal with something. And maybe you want to not have to make a decision. And you're procrastinating. But this is about perhaps not wanting to see the truth or feeling blocked, feeling uh, stuck for a moment. Uh, but this is a sense of, of being blindfolded. I'm not ready to deal with this now. I'm going to put it away and pretend it's not there because it's really uh, something that's hard for me to make this decision and I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to face the truth. Uh, so that's something to be mindful as well. Is this a situation where you're procrastinating and not wanting to make a decision or are you just sitting there thinking and thinking about what's going to happen? Which path am I going to choose? How am I going to handle this? You know, or are you simply just, um, just not coping with it and not dealing with it? That could be very true of, of what's happening is that you're just you keeping your eyes closed to the situation and not wanting to look at it for uh, whatever the facts may be. So we also have this Four of Swords. And in this Four of Swords, you can see the knight of the warrior is laying down. His hands look like they're in prayer. We've got a sword below. We've got some above here. And this is about recovery, rest, an opportunity for you to recharge. So you've been in a situation, something that has required you to be dealing with life, whatever life has thrown at you, and uh, you need to take a time out and you need to take a, um, an opportunity to rest and recover. The situation doesn't necessarily mean it's going to disappear when you go back, but you may go back with a new approach. You may have a new mindset. You may have a um, new way of thinking of how to handling it. And frankly, you might have um, taken the time to really um, recapture energy and to recapture your strength and your physical bearings so that you can go back and just have more energy and ability to handle the situation. But with the Four of Swords, this is about rest and recovery and taking care of yourself because if you keep 
go, 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 um, again, you may falter later on. Um, the other thing to think about is this, what is involved with rest. Well, it could be meditation, it could be yoga, it could be calm reflection, it could be deep breathing. It could be, again, healing with crystals or something like that. It's just a, it's the passivity of sitting and letting your body catch up and letting your mind catch up as well. And again, um, we have more sword energy. We have the Queen of Swords. And this Queen of Swords sits here so confidently, so with strength, holding her sword straight up in the air and with the hand out almost like to say, and here's what I'm deciding for you. Swords are about intellectual ability, rational thinking, doing your due diligence, looking through things carefully, making, again, objective objective uh, decisions of uh, not letting your emotions get in the way, of really looking at the facts. So for you, in the, uh, uh, you may be facing a situation that requires some very clear thinking and some ability to maybe listing out the pros and cons of a matter, looking at both sides. The blade is sharp, and uh, when you have facts available to you, then you're able to make a clear decision of how you're going to move forward. With the Queen of Swords, she is probably someone who could give you good advice. There may be someone in your circle who kind of fulfills this role, and it might be a lawyer, it could be a CPA, it could be uh, a professor perhaps, but it's someone who has uh, experience and has knowledge and is able to give you a really fair recap or a fair, um, fair advice, honest advice, truthful advice. Um, the, the thing to be mindful of with the Queen of Swords is that if you are this person who is doling out the advice, is to be careful with how you present it because sometimes this um, communication can come out a little too blunt or too critical. So be careful in how you choose your words. Be discerning in how you choose and use your words. That um, uh, she's here to help you clear up confusion and to approach a problem very rationally and with a very clear intellectual approach. And um, I also like the swords. The swords are also telling you to cut through any of the nonsense. Just cut it away, the negativity or the um, all the other extraneous things that sometimes cloud issues. So with pentacles, we have the six of pentacles. And in this illustration, you see the merchant here who is handing one of the beggars some coins. And we have another beggar here. This is a card of duality. This is a card of those who have and those who have not. It's also a reminder about life, which is sometimes you've got plenty and more than what you need. And there are other times when you are in a position where you have to ask for help. So with this Six of Pentacles, this is about generosity and helping others and having a social conscious, consciousness of wanting to help those that are less fortunate. And it certainly doesn't have to be with coins. It could be with your time, volunteering, um, helping someone uh, you know, work in their garden. It could be helping a senior go to the grocery store for them. It could be just the littlest of things that can help another human. So this is, uh, you know, when you are of service to others and when you're able to help others, it is fulfilling and, and enriching to your heart. And so, you know, this is a card of duality, which is who do you, where are you in this illustration? Are you needing help? If you need help, don't be afraid to ask for it. More than likely, people are willing and want to help. And if you're coming up with a lot of um, uh, people who are, say they want to help but are not, then take it to your community. 
there should be organizations that can offer assistance and they can give you what you need to get yourself going. And again, there's another message within this Six of Pentacles, which is giving someone what they need, the resources of what they need, of not really just giving it all, but giving you enough for you to get by. And uh, if you're in the position of being able to give, of being giving, of, of thinking about others and being able to help out. So for you, um, perhaps there's a, an opportunity to help maybe Habitat for Humanity. Maybe it's um, volunteering at the food bank, but there's something there for you to help um, enrich and to um, lighten enlighten others and to give your goodness. So the sun, how appropriate, because again, we're going to have the uh, total solar eclipse uh, where people in the U.S. are able to see the entire um, totality of the, of the solar eclipse. So if you're in the right path, particularly um, with the sun, radiance, energy, our life force, we see the freedom and the carefree nature of the child riding the horse, the red cape, meaning hang on and, and wave your passions and um, think about the enthusiasm and the things that you love doing. This is a card of joy and of happiness. So you're going to have great um, happiness, abundance, pleasure, that carefree, um, having fun type of feeling of being out in the sun having its warmth and its energy fill you up and being inspired, being creative. The sun is a positive card and that with respect to two of cups or relationships, it is a powerful positive omen that it means something good coming along. So, you know, the, the sun is our life force and soak up the sun, soak up the rays, let it fill you up. Let it allow you to radiate. Let it allow you to really feel and to um, self-actualize who you are. You know, the beauty within your own heart, the beauty within your own soul. Beautiful, beautiful card here within this reading for you. And then finally, we have the Ten of Pentacles. And this is a card about family and about, uh, again, pentacles relate to money and finances and career. And this is about building security and legacy for your family. Maybe you've been fortunate enough to benefit from family business being passed down to you or some inheritance or something like that. But this is a sense of a family working together to solidify their property, their home, um, the generations that are they're shown in this illustration. We see the patriarch, we see the couple, we see the children, the dogs, one big happy family with their beautiful home in the background. At a literal level, this could also represent that you're doing something to help uh, improve your home, the beauty of your home, uh, that you're um, perhaps saving for ch your child's education or you are um, just doing something with your family that uh, is celebrating the abundance and the security that you have worked hard for and that you've accomplished. So this is a card of family and of doing well with business and of doing well at the home. Okay, so let me take a look at the cards <clears throat> and see if there's anything else that I've missed or have not uh, shared, let's see. Well, I'm really struck by the swords, which is um, really a reminder to you to think about things intellectually and rationally, and maybe watching your emotions. And then the Two of Cups and the Sun and the Ten of Pentacles, which is a powerful set of cards. And I like the jux the, here, the ten of um, ten of wands with the four of swords, kind of balancing out the hard work, which is you know give yourself a break. 
So keep your eyes open if you're looking for someone to date or if you're in a relationship. Hopefully it will improve and get better and better. So let's um, deepen the reading by look at, looking at a love oracle card for you. Individuality, you leave you, your unique stamp of love on everything you do. Thank goodness we're all different because it makes life so much more interesting. And uh, it's always interesting to think about how people connect. Do you find yourself mostly with others who are like you? Kind of share the same type of temperament? Or are you attracted to someone who's an opposite? Uh, they say opposites attract and, you know, sometimes it's uh, good to have someone who has other characteristics to kind of balance out a relationship, but really it's up to uh, the magic and the alchemy of a situation of when you meet someone and um, be yourself. I think that's one of the biggest things is be authentic. Let people see who you are for real and you will attract whatever the universe wants you to to have you that will come to you and then finally I would like to um, pull just a theme a practice card a, you know perhaps a monthly focus that you can think about and and take with you and do some work on okay healthy choices thank you angels for guiding me to make healthy decisions Healthy decisions include resting, getting enough rest in your life and to um, allowing yourself to recharge. Healthy choices uh, includes delegating when you're feeling overburdened or too many, uh, too many obligations or responsibilities. Healthy choices um, include relying on objectivity and facts versus always jumping in emotionally. Healthy choices also include the, the basics of eating life-affirming foods, plants, vegetables, you know, healthy proteins, uh, limiting and moderating alcohol, uh, getting enough sleep, doing enough fun things in your life that bring you pleasure. You know, you are the captain of your own ship and you have to determine how you're going to do all these things and how you're going to bring it all together. But it's really, it's up to you. And perhaps with a little prayer and meditation, it can help you keep on a very healthy path. So I hope that you found this reading helpful. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please like, share, or comment. I enjoy interacting with anyone in this uh, the community and on my channel. And if you're new, please subscribe. It's a great way to show support and to stay connected, and I really do appreciate it. And I hope you'll check back again um, for next month's readings or check out other readings on my channel. Thanks so much, and take care. Bye-bye.